Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today I have the Cadis Vim 2 to do a quick review on. Now I'm going to be doing some benchmarks and some gameplay tests within Android. It does come preloaded with Android 7.1.2. It's a decent little board. Now I did a review on the Cadis Vim 1, which has the S905 quad core CPU. This has the S912, same company, Amlogic, 8 core, 1.5 gigahertz. Now the only place I found you can buy these are from Gearbest, but they do have the Cadis Vim website, which you can get a lot of support on. This is a fairly new model, so I've been waiting on some good distributions to come out of Linux so I can test those out. I'm going to test the stock firmware that comes on it, Android 7.1.2. So these boards are marketed as a do-it-yourself Android TV box. They do a great job playing Kodi, streaming, playing 4K video, but they don't do a great job at emulating old school systems. I mean, you can do SNES, NES, some N64 stuff, PlayStation works great, but Dreamcast, PSP, a lot of that's out of the question. Yes, some games will work flawlessly, but a lot of them are going to struggle. All the specs will be listed in the description, but we're going to go over a few of them right now. The CPU is an Amlogic S912 8-core at 1.5 GHz. It actually has 4 cores that run at 1 GHz and 4 cores that run at 1.5. The GPU is a Mali T820 MP3. It's a 3-core GPU and it clocks as high as 700 MHz. They do offer a few models. Now, two of them come with 3 GB of DDR4 RAM and one of them comes with 2 GB of DDR4 RAM. Same thing with the storage, you can get one with 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes, or 64 gigabytes. Those are pretty much the only differences between the three models they offer. The board has two USB 2.0 ports and one USB Type-C port. Now the Type-C port will act as OTG, but that's mainly where I power mine from. You could power the board from a different location and use the Type-C as OTG. It does have gigabit Ethernet and HDMI. Wi-Fi. 802.11abgn and ac comes preloaded with android 7.1.2 but there are some linux distributions in the works for this i've seen a couple but i want to wait until something's more stable i'm going to get into some benchmarks and some native android gameplay tests like i said this will do emulation but it's not the greatest board for emulation I do plan on doing a whole video on this board, strictly emulating N64, Dreamcast, and PlayStation. Let's go ahead and see how this thing performs out of the box. So I love these Android builds for the Cadis Vim boards. They are very clean. Hardly any bloatware at all, and I wouldn't really consider it bloatware. They do have a file explorer and a media player built in, but that's stuff that you might use down the road. Nothing like an LG phone or anything like that. We have Android 7.1.2 here. I'm going to start up IDA64 and check these specs out real quick. The OS is really fast. I mean, it's very snappy. Cadis, Vim2, Amlogic, 3 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Like I said, the CPU is an Amlogic 8 quarts, the S912. Four of the cores run at 1.5 and four of the cores run at 1000 megahertz. Display. 1920 by 1080, Mali T820, 3-core. It only does OpenGL 3.0. There are literally thousands of Android boxes on the market that use this S912 CPU. I've tested a few of them. I'm not really impressed with the performance for emulation, but as for video playback, Android gaming, it does work. Check out the Antutu benchmark score. We scored a 42,580. This was expected for the type of CPU that's in it. Now, one thing I wish they did was add a heat sink to the CPU. I'm not sure if it's throttling, but it's enclosed in a case and there's no heat sink at all. So we might be able to score a little more if you did a heat sink or a fan mod, but I tested this stock out of the box. Moving right along to the Geekbench 4 scores. I did CPU and compute. For the single core score, we scored a 635. For multi-core, we scored a 2,678. Nothing to write home about, but I mean, it does do video and Android games pretty well. If that's what you're looking for, this is a cool little option for you. But overall, I definitely suggest if you want an Android TV, you're going to spend some more money, buy an NVIDIA Shield Android TV. Compute score was only 2,036. 
3D Mark, Ice Storm Unlimited, 10,024. Very low score. We're going to go to the comparison, and I just want to show you how it compares to the NVIDIA Shield Android TV. We're way down here, but the NVIDIA Shield Android TV is a 45,199 versus this 10,000 score. So the NVIDIA Shield is like having five of these put together. Time for some native Android game testing. First up, we have Asphalt Extreme. And it's very smooth. As you can see, no glitching going on. I did turn the music off. But this is definitely playable on the Cadis Vim 2. Pretty much any game on the Android App Store, you'll be able to play here. Minus some of the games that you really need a touch screen for. You could always use your mouse if it's compatible, but I really don't suggest it. This game has come a long way in terms of optimization because when I first tested the S912, this game ran like crap. A few months later, running perfectly on the S912 CPU. So this is Rockstar's Bully. Runs great at medium settings. There are a few settings you can change, but if you go to high, you will notice a little bit of lag. I'll go there real quick just to show you guys. Gets a little glitchy moving the camera around. I mean, it's definitely still playable, but going to medium, you should have a really good experience playing this game. By the way, if you're looking for a good Android controller that's compatible with most Android boxes, the GameSir G3S is the way to go. A lot of people were complaining about the dead zones being inaccurate, but the thing is, we're not playing competitively, and I've had no trouble with it at all. I actually did a video on it. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. It's like $21 from Amazon. You really can't go wrong. Next game I tested was Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I could not get the sound working, and it kept crashing on me. So this isn't something that's really going to work right now. I'm pretty sure it's not the hardware. It's the game itself. It hasn't been updated in a little while. And hopefully it'll be fixed down the road. But for now, you will get some crashes with this game. I was able to set everything to high and it runs really smooth. Other than crashing every once in a while. Last game I tested, Minecraft. A lot of people want to know, does Minecraft work on this? Yes, it does. Minecraft Pocket Edition pretty much works on everything. I've even tested this on old MP400 GPUs. And it runs pretty decently. The developers have done an amazing job making this game work on all kinds of different hardware and a lot of people love to play Minecraft or even buy an Android box for their children to play Minecraft on because it's much cheaper than building a PC. I did set up a bunch of dynamite over here to see if we can crash the game. I'm going to set it off now. We'll definitely get some lag but I don't think it's going to crash it. So, Minecraft works on the Cadis Vim 2. Overall, the Cadis Vim 2 is a decent Android TV box. They do have some distributions of Linux that I'll be testing later on. I really believe they could have done a better job choosing the GPU-CPU combination in this box, especially for the price, because they do get pricey, depending on the model, $75 to $110. That's exactly what the price is right now on GearBest. You can get an S912 Android TV box for a lot cheaper than that. So you be the judge. I'll leave links down below so you can go check that out. Full specs are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.